it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, we're going to learn how to crochet the Rainbow Splash bath mat. This is a fun and colorful little bath rug that you can whip up in no time. I've picked an easy stitch because we are using some very textured yarn. Now the finished rug here, uh, be, like I said, it's a small little throw rug. It's about 28 inches long and it's about 15 inches wide. So we have these panels of color here. Now the yarn that I'll be using, and we'll get into that in just a moment, comes in lots of different colors and I've chosen kind of like a fun, bright rainbow theme. Uh, we have a bright yellow, a pink, a lavender, an aqua, and a green. So let's get started. We're gonna talk about the supplies first and go through the stitches, later learn how to switch colors, and finally wrap it all up with the finish work. For this project, you're going to need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, we're going to be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. I'm going to be using my Furls Odyssey hook just as a side note in case you're wondering about the hook. And we're going to be using a yarn called Scrubby Cotton. Now here's the label that I have. Each ball of this is 121 yards and I have kind of a rainbow theme going on here. This is the lemony, the tulip pink, the lavender, the Caribbean, and the jade. It comes in a ton of other colors if you want to kind of change it up. We're going to be doing sort of a rainbow spectrum here. So let's get started. Okay, I'm going to start with my first color and kind of slide the other ones out of the way for now. We're going to be using these as stripes. We're going to be utilizing all the colors to make some really pretty stripes. Okay. So our starting chain is 43. That'll give us a nice little mat shape. So what we want to do is put a slip knot on our hook. And let me just zoom in a little bit so you can see. Wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop. Bring the yarn behind the loop, reach in with your crochet hook, bring up the loop and tighten. And like I mentioned before, we're going to do a starting chain of 43. So to make a chain, wrap yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, whoops, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, tw whoops, twenty-six, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, and 43. So when you make your chains, here's our starting chain, make your chains as loosely as possible because this first row, row one, we're going to be working into our chains. So we're going to need to count our chains a little bit and sometimes they can be a little bit hard to see. Now you can see them, they're uh, loops. See all these loops that we've created? Okay, so let's move on to row one. What we're going to do, let me grab a little bit of yarn here. In the fifth chain from the hook, so one, two, three, four, five. You might need to feel for your stitches a little bit. We're going to work our first little fan. So work two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, all in that first chain. So to make a chain, I mean to make a double crochet, excuse me, wrap yarn around hook, insert the hook into the chain, wrap yarn around hook, bring up a loop, three loops are on the hook, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops, okay? Then we're gonna work another double crochet in that same chain. Then we're gonna chain one. And then we're gonna work another double crochet in the chain and then one more. So two more to make that other side of the fan. Now, I promise you row one will be the most challenging row just because we're working into the chains and the yarn's very fuzzy. But moving forward, we're going to be working into the spaces, which is much easier to see. So if you just bear with me for this one row, we'll get through it, I promise. Okay, so what we want to do next is skip three chains. Once again, you might have to feel. Now, if you kind of go in a circular motion like that, see how I kind of like open that up a little bit? So one, 
two, three, skip three chains, and then in the next chain we're going to make our next fan. So remember that was two double crochet, one and two, chain one, and then two double crochet, one and two, okay? So now we have two little fans here, okay? Now once we work into those fans, see those openings are nice and big for us to be able to see. Okay, once again, skip three chains. If you need to kind of like work your finger into that to see it, one, two, three, and then in the next one, work your next fan. So two double crochet, one, and two, chain one, and then two more double crochet. One, and two, okay? Grab a little bit more yarn. Now skip three chains, one, two, three, and in that next chain work your next fan. Once again, two double crochet, one, and two, chain one, and then two double crochet. One, and two. Okay, next, Skip three chains. One, two, three, work a fan in the next chain. Now I will say, if you miscount your chains by accident, which can happen, it can even happen with regular yarn, this yarn is very forgiving and won't quite know, the, you know, exactly how many chains you've skipped. It'll, it is very fuzzy and forgiving. Chain one, double crochet. Another tip that I wanted to give you guys is when you're working with highly textured yarn like this, just go nice and slow. Um, sometimes the little uh, textured pieces can get kind of caught in themselves, but just go nice and slow, take your time. Especially on this first row when you're counting, you wanna just go nice and slow. Okay, so let's see, skip three chains. One, two, three, and in the next chain, work that next fan. So two double crochet, one and two, whoops, and two, chain one, two double crochet, one, two, and then one, two, three, we're getting in the home stretch. Work that next fan by skipping three chains, and in the next chain, work two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet, one, and, whoops, and two, skip three chains, one, two, three, and in the chain after that, work your next double crochet, double crochet, uh, chain one, wait, whoops, I got myself all tangled here, that's my, my yarn tail. So double crochet, work another double crochet, chain one, work. There we go, work two double crochet, okay? Now, you're gonna have two chains left on your row. It's okay if you have an extra or you're missing one or something like that. It, th again, this yarn is very, very forgiving, okay? So just do the best you can and feel for it. But ideally, you should have two chains left. Um, now, if this was like smooth, fine sock yarn, it would be more noticeable. But this is really textured stuff. So you should have two chains left. Go to that last chain. So skip over that one chain, go to the very last chain, and just work one double crochet in that last chain. Now we're going to worry about the tails later. So we're going to do some nice kind of color block stripes of this rainbow. Let me zoom out for a second. This rainbow theme 
uh, color palette that we have here that's so fun and happy. Um, this is a great little piece of decor and it's not a huge mat. It's just a little bath mat you can throw down and it has like a really neat kind of foot massaging effect when you stand on it. So I'm really excited for uh, putting this in my own bathroom. So we have our row one is done. Now we're going to stick with the green a little bit longer. So let's get row two. Let's learn how to do row two and then we'll do a couple rows of the green and then a little bit later I'm going to show you how to switch colors and move on to some of these other colors as well. Okay. I'm going to stay in rainbow order. Please feel free to mix it up however you like. Okay. So for row two. Now row two is going to be the row that you repeat for the entire bath mat. Okay. So what we want to do for row two is chain three. One, two, three and turn our work. We can get this tail out of the way. Now, the moment you've been waiting for, we're going to be working into the spaces. So see all these fans that we made? In the middle of each fan, we did a chain one in the previous row. That's going to give us this really nice opening. That's where we're going to work our stitches. So the rest of the mat is super easy. Just work into those spaces. So we're going to make our fans the same way. Double crochet. Actually, two double crochet, rather. So two double crochet chain one, two double crochet. This kind of double V stitch, this uh, split fan looking stitch that I use a lot is a really great stitch for this because it gives it a little bit interest but it's not overly complicated and we're working into those spaces which is really important when you work with this highly textured yarn. Any kind of like faux fur, scrubby, anything like that, working into the spaces is really the way to go. Okay, hop over to the next fan and in that chain one space in the center of each fan, we're gonna, whoops, we're gonna work, let me just back up a little. We're gonna work two double crochet, so one and two, chain one and two double crochet, one and two. I also wanted to mention as a side note that you might when you use this scrubby yarn, you might have some left. Let's hop over to the next fan and do the same thing. Two double crochet, chain one, two double crochet. Um, but anyway, like I was saying a minute ago, you might have some leftovers when you have this uh, scrubby. I used a lot of colors, so I'm going to have some leftovers. You might want to, um, if somebody is for a housewarming or something like that, you might want to try making a matching uh, set of washcloths. So maybe make a washcloth in each color to match your little bath mat. Okay, hop over to the next fan and we're going to do the same thing. Two double crochet, chain one, and two double crochet. One and two. Okay, just like that. All right, hop over to the next fan. We're just going to be doing this all the way across. Super easy, right? two double crochet, one, two, and then a chain one, and then two double crochet, just like that. Whoops, one and two. <clears throat> Hop over to our next fan, it's right there, two double crochet, one and two, and then chain one, and then two double crochet. One and two. Whoops, went into something else there. Okay, starting to get some pretty texture. And I like the openness of it because it will help it dry when uh, you step out, it'll dry easy. You can kind of hang it up on a hook or hang it over the side of a bathtub and let it dry. You could also use it as an overlay to a towel if you want like that foot massaging of exfoliating effect, but you can have the towel up underneath too to give it a little cushion. Okay, work into the next fan, two double crochet, one and two and a chain one and two double crochet. Okay. So this is, it's pretty quick to get through each of these rows. You just have to 
if you're having trouble with it um, catching or snagging, you just want to slow down a little bit. So two double crochet, one and two, chain one and two double crochet, one and two. Okay, so to finish off the row, what we're going to do is remember that turning chain? That turning chain is next to our last fan and it creates a little space. We're going to call that the turning chain space. It's what we um, have in the pattern. Just work a double crochet into that turning chain space to finish off the row, okay? Just like that. So row two is complete. So all you're going to do is keep repeating row two over and over and over and over. Now I want my green stripe to be just a little bit wider. So I'm going to work a couple more rows, repeating row two of my green. And then when we rejoin, I'm going to show you how to transition to our next color. So the next color in our lineup, or in my lineup that I chose, is the blue. So I'm going to show you how to go from one color to the next. And we're going to have this really fun rainbow mat. Okay, so just rejoin in a few minutes and we will continue on with our next color. All right, I'm just working that last double crochet of the row. Now I've built up a nice kind of chunky stripe here with my stitch sequence. Now just to point it out, I have about six inches for my stripe and I worked one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rows. Okay, just as a side note. So I'm ready to switch colors and I want to show you how I like to do it. Now when you're working with yarn like this that's highly textured, you want to just keep everything nice and simple. So I like to just cut the yarn and tie the new color right on. Now we're going to stick with the rainbow theme. So the next color in our rainbow would be this blue. You could take it the opposite way and do yellow next too if you're doing rainbow like me. I'm going to go with the sky blue color. All you need to do is where you fastened off up here, and let me just zoom. All you need to do where you fastened off up here, there will be a little loop where that stitch is, is grab the new yarn, hook it onto your hook, and then just pull it through and tie it on. Now, we'll deal with these tails at the end of this video, but for right now, we can just leave them be. And then what you'll do, two knots is plenty. And then you can just get those tails out of the way for now. Go right into that turning chain space, bring up a loop, and then chain three. One, two, three. Turn your work. Now I gave it a little tug just to kind of straighten everything out. And then we're just going to continue along with our pattern as normal. And we have the new color. Okay, so remember two double crochet and work your stitches all the way across and just continue with the pattern like we did before. And for each color you do, if you're doing a rainbow sequence like I am, you'll just do this for each color. So just continue along changing colors as often as you need to and repeating the stitch pattern. Just working that last double crochet in that turning chain space. And now we are finished. So I went through all the colors and I sort of did them in rainbow order, or, although you don't have to. So we did the green, the blue, the lavender, the pink, and the yellow. So let's tackle the finish work next. What we're going to do is just cut the yarn and fasten off, wrap the yarn around the hook and just pull it through and then give it a tug. So now we have our ends, and what we need to do is just make sure when you weave your ends in, just thread your tapestry needle, that you're staying in the same color. You don't want to take, for example, where we switched colors, you don't want to take this lavender tail and go up into the pink area or anything like that. You want to just stay in the same color area so that your tails will be invisible. Now this yarn, this um, really textured yarn, is super easy for weaving in the ends because they just sort of disappear. If you're using a smoother strand, um, they may show a little bit more, so you gotta be extra careful with that. Okay, and then once you go weaving those in, and if you notice I wove them in two directions to sort of lock that tail into place, 
then you can just snip the tails. And we're just going to repeat for all of the tails all the way around this rug. So you just go in one direction with your needle and then just come back in the other direction, okay? And then you'll grab your scissors and just give it a little snip. So I'm going to go around this rug and finish up all the ends that remain staying in the, the same color as my ends that I'm of the area that I'm weaving it into. And then we'll rejoin and you can see the blanket or the, the rug rather <laughs> in its finished form. So we have all our ends woven in and our little throw rug is so cute. It's complete. All the ends are woven in and it's just so fun and colorful. This is a great little throw rug to um, put in the bathroom or in a kid's room even and it has so much fun texture. So that is how you crochet the rainbow splash bath mat. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiber Flux video updates. Thanks again.